بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رحمت عالم بھائی سید سلیمان ندوی محمد پیس بی اپون ہم مرسی فار دا یونیورس ٹرانسلیٹیڈ بائی ایئر آف لوتھر چیپٹر ٹوینٹی ایٹ دا بیٹل آف خندق ڈچ بنی نزیر ہیڈ لیفٹ مدینا فار خیبر دس اسپریڈ دا ویب آف انٹریگ تھرو آؤٹ عربیا اگینسٹ دا مسلمس سم آف دا ڈیپوٹیشنز آف جیوز وین ٹو مکا اینڈ انسٹیگیٹڈ دا کریش اگینسٹ دا مسلمس دے ٹک دا گفتان ٹرائب آن دیئر سائڈ پرامسنگ دیم ہاف دا پروڈیوس آف خیبر بنی اسد ور آن دیئر سائڈ All these tribes united. Now they had an army of 10,000 strong. They marched towards Medina. The Prophet coming to know the arrival of the Quraysh army consulted his companions in connection with the defense of Medina. Salman Farsi, who was an Iranian and was conversant with war planning, suggested, This city is surrounded on three sides by houses, buildings and gardens. There is one side left for the raiders to attack through. So to defend from this side, a trench should be dug that the enemy may not be able to enter the city. It was accepted by all. The Prophet came out of city and he had with him 3,000 companions. They began to dig a trench. Within 20 days, they completed the task. The Holy Prophet along with the companions had participated in the digging of the trench. Sometimes they had to remain without food for days together. But their zest and enthusiasm did not weaken. They dug the trench with their hands and carried the earth on their backs to put it on the other side. Collectively, they sang, We have made promise with Muhammad, peace be upon him. We shall fight till in our winds is life. The enemy approached. The covered hypocrites were afraid of the attack. They went back with some pretext and pretension. There was a third tribe of Banu Kureza still living in the suburbs of Medina. This tribe was not true at heart. So a column of 200 Muslims was kept aside to be on the look of these Jews that they may not pay any mischief while the Muslims were engaged with the Quraysh in war. This tribe had not come openly against the Muslims. Their chief Hai bin Aqtab had settled in Khaybar. He too had come along with his army to Makkah and from there to Medina. Banu Kureza did not like to infringe the pact for they thought that the raiders would go back and they shall have to live among the Muslims. Even if they were sure that the whole of Arabia had stood up against the Muslims, but that was the best opportunity for them to side the Quraysh in an attack. On this surety, they too came forward to help the Quraysh. Ghatfan and other were On the side of the Quraysh, the infidels besieged Medina for 20 days and they could not find any way to enter the city. At a far off distance of the trench, the width of it was smaller. The infidels made an attempt to enter the city through that small width by crossing it on their houses. Ammar bin Ba'd, a brave Quraysh, he crossed the trench. He was riding his horse. The sword Zulfiqar advanced towards him and with a single stroke of Zulfiqar, he fell on the ground dead. God is great, echoed, and the victory of the Muslims was declared loudly. It was a serious day. The enemies were pelting stones from all sides. The fort wherein the women folk had been sheltered belonged to Banu Kureza, who, noticing Muslims busy in the war, tried to capture the fort. So a few Jews went up to the gate of the fort. Safiya, Hazrat Zubair's mother and aunt of the Prophet, rushed to the spot and killed the Jew. She cut his head and threw it on the plains. The Banu Kureza thought that there were Muslim soldiers in the fort and thus did not dare to come to that side again. As the siege prolonged, the communication between the infidels diminished. The Ghatfan tribe wanted to loot Medina city and take away the agriculture produce. One of its leaders, who had secretly embraced Islam, went to the Quraysh and the Jews separately and informed them of the dissensions that had been created within their own tribes. One night, it so happened that a storm most furious blew away their tents and belongings, including utensils. Their tents caught fire as it was severe cold. The infidels began to shiver with cold and ran away. This had disheartened the raiders. Banu Kureza left them and returned to their fort. Ghatfan also went to their own place of residence. The Quraysh had been left helpless and they too had to leave the place and go back to Makkah. The atmosphere of Medina, which once had been filled with dust for about 22 days, was now cleared. End of Bani Kureza Bani Kureza tribe had gone back on their promises at such a crucial time when the Muslims were in a very precarious condition and thus they could not be forgiven. Hai, who was the ringleader of the raiders, was under the shelter of the Bani Kureza. After the infidels' departure, the Prophet moved towards them. The forts had been closed. Muslims besieged the fort for one month till the Jews requested them that their case should be handed over to the chief, Saad bin Maaz, and they could accept his decision. Saad proclaimed his decision that those who were fit for war should be beheaded and the women, children and their property should be distributed among the Muslims. This decision was implemented. This way, the third tribe of the Jews that met its fate due to their own foolishness. The property was distributed among the Muslims.